Hello, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first off, thank you for visiting my channel. Uh, if you would consider hitting the like button on the video, that helps me out a great deal. And uh, if you enjoy the video at the end, uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, I think you'll find there's a lot of good content here. So today, I'm going to use this video primarily to show you how to do a bezel set faceted stone. Uh, but I'm going to incorporate it into a project video. So uh, it's going to make these nice little drop earrings. So let's get started. All right, I've picked out a couple of pretty uh, kind of orangey citrines that I had that matched reasonably well. Show you those here. Kind of pretty ones, I think. Uh, we're going to make a bezel setting for each of those. And uh, there's a number of different ways to do bezel settings. You can, uh, the big issue is you have to uh, create a lip for the bottom of the faceted stone to fit on. So, uh, faceted stones have different parts to them. The top part is called the crown, everything above this midpoint there. The midpoint is called the girdle of the stone, and the bottom is called the pavilion. So, we need uh, the pavilion is typically pointed on a faceted stone like this, and so putting it in a regular bezel doesn't really work because it sits on that point like that. Plus, we want to get a lot of light to travel both in the back side of the stone and the front side of the stone if we can in order to make this really sparkle. Uh, and so we want to do an open back. So two things, we want it open and we want it to have a lip for the stone to sit on. They make step bezels you can buy that have a built-in lip that you can just make your bezels out that, these, that work just fine like that. It's, I just never found a need to buy those because it's pretty easy to make your own step. And what I do is I use 3 inches. 3 16th, I can't say 3 16th today, 3 16th inch bezel. Um, I'm going to file the end here. And I'm going to go ahead and make standard bezels like I would for regular stones here. Now, with faceted stones, it's easiest to set them on their tops because they sit flatter than to try and measure for your bezel around one that's being tippy on that pointy bottom there. Just like always, for me, these are so small, I have trouble making a bezel around those so, uh, with my fingers, which are kind of sausage-y. And uh, so what I do is I grab the end of the uh, bezel material like this, and then I just kind of spiral around the pliers like that, and it gets kind of a curve going. I'm not pulling very hard, I'm just kind of spiraling. And what that does is it allows me to get a nice sort of roundish curve going and then I have it the shape started that I need and I can just set it down over the stone like this and I'm just going to use the pliers to kind of neaten it up a little bit to get it tighter around there or to bend it where I need to if I can get it quite roundish enough. I want to get it pretty tight. You don't have a lot of extra space to work with when you're going to put a platform for it to sit on. Uh, so you need to be really pretty close to the size of the stone itself. You got to be careful when you're doing bezels for these too. When you're pulling it tight, sometimes it pops the faceted stone up off of the table or whatever surface you're on to sit at an angle. And in that case, you might get your bezel too small. So you want to make sure they're sitting flat when you make a mark here. So I'm going to make a little scratch there, and I'm going to cut that off of the scratch. And these two are calibrated stones, so since that's the case, I'm just going to use the first piece of bezel that I cut to measure the second one. Calibrated meaning they were probably cut by a machine into exactly the same dimensions. Sound a little flat too. These particular ones look to be maybe five millimeters or six millimeters. It's hard for me to judge anymore. Okay, so we just gotta measure this one. Okay. 
So I'm going to go ahead and make these uh, into squares like I do when I solder them closed. Squares are rectangles. I never usually get perfect squares. <clears throat> Primarily I do this because it makes it much easier to solder. shape these guys a little bit. That's pretty good, size-wise. They make tools called um, bezel mandrels that you can shape these more quickly on if you're so inclined. I kind of like doing this part though, it's kind of soothing to me. One risk of using a bezel mandrel too is that they are tapered from small to large and so if you shove one of these down too hard you'll produce a little taper in your bezel that will make it kind of a cone and that's not usually desirable. Okay, we got those pretty well. Um, the other thing you need to do uh, when you're doing a faceted stone bezel as we talked about is to make that little ledge. Now, if I just do one little jump ring around the inside bottom like I would for if I wanted to do an open back uh, facet or an open back cabochon, uh, which allows you to see the back but also creates a little platform, it's not going to sit the stone high enough for that point not to be sticking out the back still a little bit. So I usually do two rings, one on top of the other in each of these. So I just make four little jump rings that fit perfectly in there, push them down there, and then solder them in and then you have a pretty nice little platform for them to sit on. Um, occasionally you have a really, uh, if you're doing a much bigger stone that has a point like this, uh, you may need to do three rings to get it up high enough to prevent that from sticking out the back. So let's start with this. I'm going to file some 18 gauge round wire flat. And you can use a round nose pliers or whatever method you prefer to make little jump rings. For these ones, in order to get them sized pretty nicely, I usually manually make little rings like this with the 18 gauge wire. With a, a, notice I, I cut a little piece off about 6 or 7 inches long. That gives me something to hold on to while I shape it. If I do it like this where it, it overlaps itself, sort of like a spring if I, keep, if I kept going, that allows me to hold it over the bezel like this so I can see how what size I am as far as whether it will fit inside of it or not. And if it's, in this case, it's a little bit too big still. So I'm just going to make that loop a little bit smaller until I think it's pretty close to the size. I still generally cut it to where it's not quite small enough to fit in there because one thing I don't like is if I cut the ring too small and I end up, when I solder it in there, it has a little gap between the two ends here. So I want to gradually cut it down until it fits in there perfectly. Hopefully you can visualize what I'm talking about, but I will show you as I, as I go. Um, see, right now, if I tried to push it in there, it's still a little bit too big. And so what I can do is I can gradually, like I said, snip out a little piece. Pull it back together, make sure it's still kind of round. And we'll try to push it in there. Okay, so this one looks like I probably could force it in there, but if you have to force it too tight, 
it may ride up the side a little bit in order to fit in there. And if that happens, then when you go to set your stone, you're going to have trouble getting it to sit flat. So I think I'm going to take a little bit more out of this one. See where we're at then. The other thing I want to make sure, and I'm probably going to cut out cutting all the other three like this for the sake of time, is that's still just slightly too big. Um, the other thing you need to make sure is once you have them the right size, make sure they're not wavy or these ends are offset too far because that will also create a situation where your faceted stone won't have a flat platform to sit on and that's problematic as far as getting it to set nicely. Okay. This one I may have cut just a little bit uh, too far because I can still see a gap there. Um, but that's okay. What I'll do is since I'm making two one on top of the other, I'll put this one on the top where you won't be able to see it. So. Yeah, those are pretty good size. I'm going to push this one in. And I'll set this one on top of it. I, sometimes I use the flat side of the pliers to give me a little leverage. Make sure it's all the way in there flush. So I think it looks pretty good. Oops, maybe not. <laughs> this one I push down. You always want to make sure before you solder it in that you push down the top ring um, to make sure it hasn't tipped up at all. The easiest way to solder these in, I think, is kind of slick. Is I'll just uh, I'll flux them, and then I'll set two or three big pieces of solder underneath these things and then heat them and it'll just suck it right up in there. It's kind of cool how it works. Kind of cool how it just sucks it up right off of the pad. It's, that always entertained me when it worked against gravity. Okay, so it's going to look a little rough on the bottom here. So what I usually do then next is to just file it down until it's a flat surface. I've 
done this in a few videos already, but I've never specifically addressed making a setting for a faceted stone with an open back like this, a bezel setting. Okay. After a while, you get it down to where it's going to be a nice, shiny, flat surface. I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit. And it looks, you know, very clean, I think. I'll do that to this other one, and then we'll uh, show you how the stone sits in them. I'll try and zoom the camera on this to show you what I'm talking about. But right now, I probably could have put a third layer in there if I wanted to, because I have enough bezel to work with. But I generally don't want the bezel to be that tall anyway, so I'll file it down. And what we're going to do, um, this will be after we attach this to the rest of the earring that I'm going to make out of it. We're going to file that bezel down until it's just barely above the center point of the stone, which is called the girdle. So it just has enough sticking up above that to get a grab on the, on the upper part of the stone, while still showing off that top part of the stone pretty well. So, But before we get to that stage, I wanted to put um, make these into some little earrings that uh, my wife wears all the time, actually. Um, they're super simple, not hard to make. You could do them with uh, just a regular bezel set cabochon as well. But uh, for being something so basic, uh, I saw quite a few of them. So I think I'm just going to. I'm not measuring this too much or anything, I'm just kind of cutting off some pieces that are about the right length that I want. That's 14 gauge square wire. relatively straight here. File the end. So really I'm just going to solder these, these square wire bars. the bezel like that, and then I'll cut them off to the same length, file the ends, and then I'm going to put a little tiny jump ring at the top and we'll um, pickle those, and then I'll let them sit for a while and then we'll come back and I'll clean them up and uh, we'll set the stones. So, After you practice this for a while, you can probably knock you know, five or six pairs of these out an hour. Although, that gets tedious when you're doing production work like that. I kind of like doing each piece a little bit unique, even though it's not as efficient. So to get them the same length, you can just line them up like that. Just cut them off. I'm going to file that a little flat. Okay, grab some 20 gauge uh, round wire and a little piece of 14 gauge round wire. And what I'm going to do to make the little tiny rings is I'm just going to wrap this 20 gauge wire around that 14 gauge wire. Should be nice symmetrical little tiny jump rings. And then you can just easily snip them off one at a time. In this case, I just need a couple. Actually, uh, 
we'll solder these closed first with a little piece of solder. And then we'll solder them to the tops of those, these little square wire uh, bars that we created there. So I'm going to cut myself some little tiny pieces of solder this time. Generally, there's probably enough solder on that ring to stick it to it, but oftentimes I'll pick up an extra piece just to be safe in case I need to add some. I'm going to give it a little more flux again. Flux it into a little bit. Okay, I already picked up a little ball of solder on there. Now when you're heating two things of disparate size like this, the bigger one gets most of the heat because the smaller one heats up really quickly comparatively. So see if it jumps on there automatically. Yeah, we actually got a seam, but I'm gonna add a little bit more just to be safe. Make sure it's a good solid seam. So I'm gonna chuck that one in the pickle. Let's bring this guy over here. Very simple little earrings, but people really seem to like these. They get a lot of sparkle coming in hot. And then, uh, let's let those pickle for a little while, and then I'll come back and I'll clean them up a bit, and then I'll show you how to set the stones, and then we can get these ones finished. Hang loose. Okay, so off camera, I went ahead and did some of the filing to bring this down to the level it needs to be on these two little earrings. And it'll be a little bit hard to see with the resolution camera that I have, but I've left just a little bit of bezel uh, material sticking up over the height that the girdle of the stone, which is that the widest point of the stone, uh, so it's just barely above that. So it just get enough to get a grip on it there. So. Here's the second one here. Okay. Do just a little bit of smoothing out here. So when you're setting one of these faceted stones in a in a in a uh, bezel setting like this, because they're shaped like a funnel almost, uh, kind of an upside down cone. Uh, when you push on one side of the bezel over here, sometimes it pushes the stone so it tips that way. So what I generally do to get it started is I'm using the flat side here and I'm going to push it in a little bit on one side. Go straight across from that side, push it in a little bit. Look at it from the side, make sure it didn't tip it up anyway. So do it until it's not moving in that dimension too much, going back and forth straight across from each other. And then I'm going to go um, 90 degrees. Do a little dimple over here. And then do a little dimple straight across from it. Okay. Make sure everything's still sitting straight. Then I can start doing the spaces in between.
periodically look at it from the side and make sure it hasn't tipped in a weird direction or anything. So until you get it kind of tightened down, it still can move on you. Once you got it to stop moving, then you can just keep working your way around and doing the, the rolling over pressure like we do on a regular uh, bezel for a, a, a cabochon stone. Once you think it's not moving anymore, I'm going to go ahead and do the burnishing stage where I rub that top edge. Quite a bit of pressure. give these a little poke from behind to make sure they're in there. Nothing more embarrassing than selling something and having a stone fall out. Okay, let's find some 20 gauge round wire. And make some ear wires for it. Usually comes about that long. It's probably two and a half to three inches. like that. Around twice. Gives me a little extra to hold on to when I'm polishing these guys. Because sometimes these little tiny earrings are really hard to hold on to, especially if you're wearing leather gloves, which I always do when I'm polishing. So. Okay, these guys are ready to go. I'll go polish them and I'll bring you back the final result and I'll finish the ear wires. So I finished polishing the little citrine earrings. A couple of nice little sparkly citrine earrings. I'll try and get a better picture and post it at the end of the video. I hope you found uh, that the way that I do uh, open back bezels for faceted stones to be easy and a relatively simple way to do it. Uh, if you did, uh, make sure to hit the like button on the video and subscribe to my channel if you really enjoyed it. So um, thanks for watching and uh, uh, also don't forget uh, I love comments and suggestions so uh, please leave a comment if you want to. Thanks for watching. Uh, happy silversmithing. Take care.